Hey, hi everybody. It's uh, Ross over at the Daily Jaws. Hope you are well. It's great to see so many of you joining the chat already. Going to um, just give it a couple of minutes just to let as many people join um, as possible. Could you just give me a little thumbs up maybe in the uh, in the comments just to let me know you can hear me? That would be great. Um, hope you're all well. Tell me where you're from as well. Tell us, a, give us, a, send us a flag or something. Tell us uh, who we've got online where you're from. Hello everybody. Fantastic. Looks like most people can hear me. That's fantastic. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, everybody. Hi, Dean. Thanks very much for joining, mate. Good stuff. Wow. Loads and loads of people are joining in. This is amazing. What a turnout. I know we don't do this very often, but um, tonight is a very, very special evening. Um, obviously, the man himself, Ian Shaw, is going to be joining us uh, shortly. Um, sorry if my voice sounds a little hoarse, by the way. Um, today's broadcast is sponsored by Boots uh, Maximum Strength uh, Cold and Flu. I've not been very well um, over the last week or so, so my voice is a little uh, hoarse, and I may be coughing a little bit during the interview, but I'll cover up my mic so hopefully it won't be uh, too disruptive um, hello Christopher okay when's yours coming out on 4k blu-ray great question we are looking into that at the moment um, we are going to be getting some more information on that but there are rumors it's going to be early June but we'll let you know for sure um, Ian are you online yet can you give us a cheeky hello Okay, while we wait for Ian to uh, join the conversation, I um, just want to sort of give you a quick rundown on uh, Ian himself and sort of the man and, and who we're going to be speaking to tonight. Um, so I think it was towards the end of 2018, um, a video came online um, with Ian doing a uh, impression or sort of a retelling of the Indianapolis speech and that video went crazy. Not just in terms of the performance, but also it was the... Um, the look and everything and how much he looks and sounds and embodied his dad and it was one of the biggest things I'd seen in a while regarding Jaws I thought hmm, this is interesting but then nothing really sort of came out and then all of a sudden the shark is broken was announced which is just incredible um, myself and the chief writer Dean we were lucky enough to go and see the show in Brighton um, towards the end of last year and we caught up with Ian and, and the cast uh, on the day it's a fantastic show. I won't give away too much, but I'll let Ian sort of explain it for himself. Um, but it's a really, really incredible show. It's definitely something um, that you should try and see if you can. There was going to be a West End uh, run um, towards sort of May. Um, and as, as I said, Ian will be uh, telling us a lot more about that soon. So who else have we got online? Ian, are you online yet? Let me have a quick look. Where are you? Just going to have a quick look and see. Ian Shaw is there. He is online. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to invite Ian now to uh, to join us for the conversation. So uh, get ready, guys, and uh, give Ian a warm welcome. Ian, hello. Hello. Hello, welcome to Instagram Live and welcome to The Daily Jaws. Well, thanks for having me. No, you're absolutely welcome. How are you today, okay? I'm good, yes. Good all stuff, good. good stuff. Can you hear me okay? I know we had a problem sort of earlier on in the week, but all good this time? I can hear you fine. Perfect. Can you hear me? Well, I can, absolutely. Thank you, it's fantastic. So, um, Ian, great to have you with us this evening, and thanks for sort of joining us and taking time out from uh, the rehearsals and everything. I know it's going to be sort of a busy time for you. Um, but what I'd love to do is I'd love to dive in, and I'd love for you just to tell us a little bit about The Shark is Broken, maybe just sort of set the scene for us a little bit about what the play's about. So The Shark is Broken is basically between takes. The, you know, as, as I'm sure a lot of... Uh, people know um, who are interested in the film that um, they had such difficulty with the shark um, that they that they had a lot of time it spiraled into like um, I think it was a 159 day shoot in the end mm -hmm. um, 
so it's it's a, a, a it's that slice of of life that you know nobody ever got to see really of the three albums together stuck uh on the orca mm. um and things don't always go swimmingly <laughs> <laughs> to say the least, yeah, that's right. I mean, everyone that's sort of familiar with the Jaws log and uh, all of the sort of the literature out there that's about Jaws, you know, everything that could have gone wrong did. Um, but the thing when I when I saw the um, the preview back in August um, in Brighton, it was inspired just for you to have captured those moments between takes, as you say, and the sort of thinking about the conversations that the cast may have been uh, may have been having. Tell us, how did the the idea for the Shark Is Broken come about? Where did it all start? Um, it was it was a silly idea. It, um, I had a moustache for a part uh, maybe three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, tidying up my moustache and I, th I just, I thought that I looked quite like Quint. <laughs> and then, you know, and that's kind of set a train of thought going and um, I thought back to the time when I played Colonel Tibbetts, who was the pilot of, of the Enola Gay, um, the the plane that dropped the Hirosh the bomb on Hiroshima, mm -hmm. and um, that I thought was odd because obviously I love the we all love the and the Indianapolis speech um, that my dad gives about uh, delivering the bomb. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was just a sort of an odd connection um, that he would, that the father would be delivering the bomb to the son. <laughs> then I, I, I read Carl Gottlieb's The Jaws Log and it's such a wonderful book. <coughs> um, you know, I urge anybody who hasn't read it to read it. Uh, just, you know, if nothing else, it's just a, a terrific description of what it's like to make a movie and how, and how, you know, difficult it can be, and uh, mm. the process involved. Um, so then I kind of, I thought, well, what would happen if I wrote something about, you know, about, you know, behind the scenes? And I did, sketched out a few ideas, and then I shoved it in a drawer because I thought it would just be too embarrassing um, uh, because the dangers of getting it, of, of getting the tone wrong would be, be just too horrendous because you know not only do i admire my father greatly but um, mm. i'm a big jaws fan myself um so um it, it it was sometime after that i had a drink with um a friend of mine and we were talking about it and he thought it was a great idea and i'm talking about it with other people and my family and it all kind of everybody else seemed so positive about it mm. that um I ended up writing it with the help of Joseph Nixon, who was instrumental in, you know, kind of pushing us over the line. Mm -hmm. um, and then everybody seemed to enjoy it, you know, and, th and then the ride has begun, you know. It's, it's a really interesting thing you say that you sort of sat on this idea f for a little while and you sort of literally, you know, physically put it away in a drawer and then decided to maybe revisit it and, and sort of do it now. I mean, in terms of the dilemma, what was the what was the thing that made you really sort of decide to commit to the idea and go, I'm the one that has to, to do this, right? I am going to commit it and, and see it through. Well, it's quite a personal story. You know, uh, the other thing is I should, should mention that I read my father's diaries, um, which were uh, brief diaries and they were about his struggle with alcohol. Um, so quite sensitive material, you know, which I haven't included in the play specifically, but the uh, but the issue interests me greatly, you know, and then, um, you know, but they were also candid in their interviews, Richard Dreyfuss and Roy Scheider, and they, they all have interesting families and fathers, and, and Richard obviously didn't get on with Robert all the time, and that was an interesting relationship. Mm. I'm still not certain what that relationship was, mm. which is, is great um, food for uh, 
actual play, you know, because you can kind of go one way or another, or in, or in fact both. You can kind of go both ways with it and keep it uh, uncertain what that relationship is. That, that was one of the things that myself and Dean talked about after the, seeing the, the show in, in, in Brighton. We love the way that you kind of left it to a part for the audience to decide what that relationship was like, because there's lots of speculation around what the genuine fuel was behind that relationship. Was it a genuine animosity between the two? Was there a bit of um, friendly rivalry? Or was it something that your dad was maybe doing deliberately to try and create that tension that, that could be brought to the screen to make those characters even come more to life and there's so much that you can read into that relationship and the thing that I loved about the play was that that was left almost to the audience's imagination or for them to decide so really really sort of cleverly and carefully written um why have you decided to do this now how do you mean um uh, the play so why 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 now why not sooner why not later Sorry. Well, I'm I'm the same age for one thing, so mm -hmm. uh, I would be a I'm slightly older, in fact. But um, um, you know, uh, it's if I if I was to to act in it, it it would uh, it, it's now. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think the play has a life uh, beyond. You know, <coughs> um, I'd be fascinated to um, to see another actor play this part. Actually, I was going to say, would that be odd? to watch another actor play your dad or is it something you need to do for your own or no no another actor does you know um you know i'm, I'm i'd be interested yeah no so would i <laughs> um in terms of the the performance i mean i'm going to read you some of the quotes and responses we've had from from some of the followers from some of the clips um fabulous so much like your dad thought it was him brilliant oh my God, this is unreal. The resemblance and the vocal pitch is beyond uncanny. This is not Robert Shaw's son. This is his clone. Uh, wow, just wow. That's just some of the comments that are coming from, from the community. How does that reaction to the show and your performance specifically make you feel? Well, it's very gratifying, you know. Um, it's, it, it, it's very satisfying, um, you know, that, we're, that they think that we're on the right track. You know, absolutely. Um, I, I mean, I felt confident ab about that aspect of, of, I felt that I could, you know, uh, you know, I adored my father and, and I, I suspect, you know, that I have over the years occasionally kind of, um, you know, pretended to, to be him, you know, um, uh, not, n not in any particular role I've specifically played, but just kind of mucking about, mm. um, and yeah, no, so that's, that's, uh, you know, really, really, um, it's heartening that, uh, that, you know, that, 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 that to hear those comments. Um, mm. I, I also, I do understand other, other people's anxiety because, um, you know, Jaws is such a special film to so many people. And I can understand if anybody starts tinkering around mm. uh, with, with it that, that that they might feel anxious but um i should point out that it isn't you know a remake or a sequel it it is a separate beast and you know while i do um you do get to see quint you, most of what you see is robert shaw mm. fr from me yeah yeah i know Abs absolutely um is it is it strange performing as your as your dad? Do you find it more challenging than say other roles, or is it easier? Um, I thought it would be uh, challenging, and of course, you know, with every role, you know, you've got to keep your wits about you and your concentration. But I would I would say that I have enjoyed it. I've really I've I've, I've found it quite fun mm. because he's a he's a he's a <laughs> He's a very interesting character, you know. He's, um, you know, he's he's quite full on. So, um, so it's fun, you know. Yeah. Mm. And what was it like, sort of preparing for the role? I know you said you had to go through some of the, the journals and, and maybe sort of. I think you mentioned looking at some interviews as well. What was that like reviewing? The... Yeah, I mean, God, I mean, it has been a process. I think I've been through every emotion um, available to me. Um, mm. So there were, I did, I did have my doubts and. Um, you know, there were times where it did feel 
were quite emotional and you know uh he died when i was was eight and i grieved for you know a decade or so and i think that's pretty much it but there there was clearly um uh some grief left so you know mm. that that um, that was therapeutic um you know and it was difficult to to kind of balance the you know i didn't want to uh you know completely put him in this sort of you know i didn't want to put my idol in this sort of on this pedestal you know i had to um he had to it had to be honest it has to be um you know um it has to be the darker side as well mm. so that was tricky but that you know joseph nixon um my co-writer was uh was was great to you know to bounce you know those ideas off we still didn't know we, you know when it came to opening night i was backstage thinking this is the worst mistake of my life you know and it's going to the whole thing's going to crash and um it's going to be incredibly embarrassing um so when we got to the end of the performance and everyone seemed to have had a, a terrific time i mm. um i i just felt you know e extreme relief you know yeah i can imagine i mean don't get me wrong my dad's not an actor i wouldn't want to play him or <laughs> try to imitate him at all so i get kind of where where you're coming from what do you think your dad would make of this this whole thing if he was still around and he was watching you do this what would you think well i mean i i hope he i hope he would give a blessing i mean in a way it, it, we wouldn't have done the play if he was hmm. um the play is a is 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 a, a love letter to to these three actors you know uh obviously richard's still with us but um you know um certainly i felt you know that i was you know to some extent saying goodbye in an active way to to my dad you know doing this um mm. but it's not just that of course you know there's there's um there's a lot of interesting things that are, you know i'm not saying that we we knew necessarily that we're in the play but as we were doing it um seemed to be coming up um you know the process of filmmaking and um, and and just the interesting dynamic of uh, you know you know when richard and rob are fighting <coughs> how critical roy's presence is and how that affects everything because he's sort of the peacemaker and yeah um when you're writing it you you can't predict or how all the elements are going to come together exactly so mm. um to some extent i think we were a, a little bit fortunate um which i guess is what you need you know Hmm. And just on the subject of the other sort of actors, have you heard from anybody um, connected with the movie or of Dreyfus himself at all? I'm, I think he's aware of the, the show. Um, he, he, he was, I heard that he was asked, because he was in England last year and he was uh, promoting a book, I think. Um, and he was asked whether he'd heard of the show. And I think he, he joked that... It, you know, he wondered if he could audition for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was in um, an evening with Richard Dreyfus in London. I was, I was actually there. Um, and he was, yeah, he was, he was very curious about the project. I think this was the first time he'd sort of really heard about it. And then, yeah, he made the joke of auditioning. So, I mean, w would you consider Dreyfus to play Dreyfus? <laughs> <laughs> um, Liam, Liam Murray Scott does a wonderful job. So um, I, I hope Richard gets to see it you know um i know he's aware of it um steven spielberg is is aware of it and um uh has given it his blessing you know as as it were um uh, you know and um uh of course i met richard i don't know if i told you this in 1994 i auditioned for him he was directing hamlet oh right um I had forgotten that uh, Richard and Robert didn't uh, exactly get on and um, <coughs> he mentioned who I was and he went white and um, I, 
you know, he, I wasn't expecting that reaction. He, he sort of, he looked a bit sort of um, shocked. Mm. Um, and I don't think the audition went very well. I certainly didn't get the part, probably because I wasn't good enough. But, uh, uh, who knows? Um, and then obviously, you know, as the years have gone by since then, the, the, Richard did a chat show in Ireland where my niece um, uh, was in the audience and they had quite a con connection and, and Richard said some very lovely things about Robert. Mm. So, um, you know, I think he's, um, whatever happened, I think he is d d at peace with, uh, with the situation these days. Yeah, in, in London, when Richard was talking about your dad, because it, it came up quite a lot, particularly when we started talking about Jaws, he was just very, very respectful uh, of your dad, not just as a, a person, but also just his ability as an actor. And um, they would have um, sort of play fights and sort of acting fantasies, all this kind of stuff. You know, I'll be your, I'll be your Lear if you'll be my Hamlet, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think with Dreyfus, I mean, yeah, again, we don't know the, the truth around the relationship. Some people think it was deliberate on on the part of the actors to try and bring something to the screen that wasn't necessarily there, or it could have just been a genuine clash of personalities, whoever. But on the day when, when Richard was in London, he was certainly very, very respectful of, of your dad and, and, and his work. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Ian Shaw, the man and, and the actor. So obviously you could have gone into any career, you could have done anything, um, but you followed, or potentially followed in your, your father's footsteps. So why did you become an actor and writer, was your dad an influence in that? Or was it something completely that you had your mind set on from the very beginning? I mean, I, I think that uh, because both my parents were actors and because they were actors, it seemed to me like a perfectly normal thing to do. Hmm. But I don't think they were the inspiration. I, I would put that down to, my, uh, to a teacher at school, um, Michael Walsh, um, who was very ambitious with the school plays, um, very challenging grown-up plays we did. Um, you know, this is of age sort of eight to 12. Um, and I just loved it. I loved, um, you know, telling stories, pretending to be different people. Mm. Uh, it just was a, a lot of fun and interesting, kind of like, you know, you know, because you because you have to try and figure out who they are, who you think they are, and mm. um, and that fascinates me. That sort of detective work, mm. um, yeah. And you know, uh, then then uh, as I got older, I just did more and more and more, and just it would just seem such a, a laugh, really. <laughs> Not many people. You know, I mean, it's a tough profession, obviously, in, in mm. terms of uh, earning money all the time. That's, that's, mm. that's, and my father always seemed to, to, to say, if I remember, and certainly other people in my family have said that he said this, that, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a good idea. Oh, really? He, what, I don't for you he, or for him? I don't think he wanted his children to, um, uh, to pursue a career in uh, as as actors. Hmm. So um, do you, so do you yeah. think if um, if you had had the chance to act with your dad, what what do you think that might have been like? Oh, good God, I don't know. I mean, he was. Uh, it's that's very. Uh, it's hard to speculate. Uh, he was quite a strong character. But then again, I suppose in, in my own small way, I, I, I probably was to some extent. I, I remember sitting at the end of the table. We had the big family. So there's like 10 children hmm. or nine children when I'm telling this story. Um, and my father would be at one end and I'd be at the other end. And I would just pull out my joke book and tell these terrible, you know, jokes that five or six year olds tell. Hmm. And um, sometimes it got so annoying that my dad would like pick me up and put me, put me outside the, <laughs> mm. wow. um, I just kept on, you know, kept at it. So I guess I, I'm quite stubborn, but 
I don't know. It, 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 it might have been difficult because, you know, um, he, like I say, he was a strong, strong personality. He mm. would not fools gladly, you know, as Richard found out. Yeah. What's your, um, what's your fondest memory of your dad? He was very funny um, and very phys physically affectionate. You know, he'd pick you up and, and you know, hug you. And uh, I, I, he once, somebody once came to our house and he thought it would be tremendously amusing to, to put on um, his wife's nighty you know, um, and to, in order to greet them. Okay. And it, that sort of thing, um, uh, I remember fondly. He was very, um, very cheeky um, hmm. person, which, which, which doesn't really come out. So, although in Jaws, there's quite a bit of cheekiness, I think, at times. And um, then some of his interviews as well, some of the stuff that he did towards, I think it was what, the early 70s, we were watching a few on YouTube. Very cheeky, I think is the word, yeah. Cheeky. Yeah. Cheeky guy. Yeah, he uh, he he wasn't sort of straight laced, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, he liked to drink and he liked to sing, and you know, that kind of stuff. How do you think, um, or what do you think he? Could... Sorry, sorry, when he was, sorry. you could hear him throughout the house, a big house. Uh, he'd be singing, you know, very very loudly. <laughs> What's um? What do you think you'd make of modern day cinema and and sort of the way things are done now? Uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, in the end, the th the thing about it is, I it's very hard to say. Um, he seemed to slightly fall out of love with movies after Jaws, but then he didn't really get a great script. Mm. So I think, you know, I suspect if he'd been given a really great part, um, you know, no disrespect to, to anybody who worked with him after Jaws, um, by the way, but um, I think it felt like Jaws was the, was the high water mark. Mm. Um, so I don't know. I mean, if he'd, if he'd worked with Scorsese or somebody like that, it would be, uh, you know, could have been amazing but um anyway speculation mm. are there um any parts in sort of modern day cinema that you think dad could have nailed that um well i i i, I mean he was he was quite versatile um i think he'd be i i don't know i, I have so many um people that I admire hugely that I think he would have fit in with. I mean, like I just mentioned Scorsese, but I mean, I think that, I don't know, the Coen brothers or, um, you know, he might be good in, um, what, what is the Coen brothers one where, where um, uh, Javier Bardem is, is the... No country for old men. Yeah, maybe, maybe the Javier Bardem part would have been interesting. I don't know. I don't know. That's an interesting thought. I was, or maybe even the Tommy Lee Jones character. Possibly. Yeah. The cop, maybe. Maybe that's the thing. I'm, I'm probably never going to watch that film in the same way again now. Um, and obviously... He seemed to suggest that he, he wanted to, to, to focus on the writing, really, mm. and that it was making movies was, was, was to earn money, you know? Yeah. Well, obviously, Jaws is... Um, the greatest film ever made. There's no argument about that. But what's your favourite film? My favourite film? Mm. Uh, you know, I'm a cinephile, um, Ross, so um, I love too many films and, and some, some really bad films too. Um, I love uh, Stanley Kubrick, so I love 2001 and um, Brilliant. Uh, To Strange Love. Um, uh, I love the Marx Brothers. I love Frank Capra, um, Preston Sturgis movies. Um, 
I really like Sam Peckinpah, actually. And, um, you know, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, which is not a great movie, but I just can't help myself. I really like that film. It's very violent. Mm. Um, uh, the Ballad of Cable Hogue is another one he made mm. that I love. Um, I, I think I'm a bit annoying in that I like, I like too many films, but um, yeah. No, it's, um, it, it's a fair comment. I mean, there are just so many, I mean, I'm a cinephile myself. I mean, obviously Jaws is my, my passion, my love, but you know, there's such a broad range of, um, of movies and, and quality, particularly coming out recently. And I'm so glad you didn't say Jaws the Revenge because I probably would have terminated the interview at that point. Um, but let's talk about Jaws itself. Um, now you've alluded that you're a, a fan of the movie. Um, what's it like watching Jaws, knowing that your dad is in it and, and has played such a big part in not just the movie, but the, the longevity and the legend of the film. You know, I was always very proud, you know, um, I think he does a tremendous job and I, and I love the film and I, and I, I think there are so many people on that film that do, do a, a terrific job. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, it's a real team effort. And, um, you know, I, I always, I think I hadn't seen it for a while and then I watched it again when I was like 15 and I, and I thought, oh my God, it's not just because I was young. This actually really is a, mm. a classic movie. Um, it grips you from the beginning. You know, it doesn't let go until the end. Mm. Do you have any particular favourite moments or characters in the movie? I'm guessing I know which is going to be your favourite character, but... In terms of moments, any particular favourites? I love the Indianapolis speech because it breaks the rules of cinema and it, and it just so, I mean, and that, and that was the other point of inspiration for The Shark is Broken, to get that on the stage, that speech, you know, because mm. I think it, 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 it's, it is quite theatrical. Um, uh, I think that uh, the performances are so wonderful. You know, Scheider's performance is, is so charming. Uh, I love the scenes with his, you know, his, with the family, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the funny, the crushing of the can is, was hilarious. Yeah. Um, uh, Dreyfus is, is, is absolutely wonderful. The, the whole thing of, of the autopsy on the shark and, and, and the, the, the acting, um, mm -hmm. the smell, you know, making it feel that real. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, there are so many. It's, it's sort of littered with, with, with you know, and that, I, that's what a classic is. You know, it's just one uh, wonderful sequence after another. You know? Yeah, no, couldn't agree more. That's fantastic. So we've come to the part of the interview where we're going to throw some uh, follower questions. Now, there was... Loads and loads and loads of questions for you. Um, as soon as we announced the interview, literally the inbox just went crazy. And there was one question that came up, sort of asked probably close to about 40 or 50 times. I'm going to ask that question towards the end of the interview because I think it might actually break the internet. <laughs> um, so when you give your answer to this particular question, if, in if Instagram goes down, it's because Ian Shaw has broken it with his answer. Um, so we're going to go through some of these. Some of these are absolutely fantastic. Some of them have got nothing to do with Jaws at all or, or the shark is broken or anything like that. So to kick off, this is from um, Ian Robertson um, out there in the, uh, the Twitterverse. Um, hi, Ian. Who do you think would win in a fight of your dad's characters, Quint or Red Grant from, from Russia with Love? Um, 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 well, I think if they were on the boat it would be Quint because he'd be on home territory. Mm -hmm. um, if they were on a train, it would be Red Grant. I think that would be my answer. And what if they were just on normal land or in a boxing ring? It was like a celebrity character fight. I don't know. Red, Red Grant looked pretty good. Um, if I remember rightly. Um, when, is it Rosa Clare punches him or... Yeah, she gets the he, luck with us and he might have the edge. But who knows? I mean, uh, Quint has the experience, and he's got a harpoon gun, so <laughs> that could be it. Um, in terms of the shark is broken, 
Um, any plans to bring it to the States or take it on a tour um, after the run in the West End? There are no firm plans, but we have a wonderful producer, um, Sonia Friedman, who is incredibly experienced uh, mm -hmm. and internationally renowned. So, you know, if, if the, the, the play is, is very popular, it will, it will find an audience. I don't know what kind of, where we're going to be mm -hmm. um, at this point. <clears throat> I think we have to, to take things, you know, one step at a time. But um, I would certainly love to, um, you know, to do both. I'd love to, um, you know, go to America. And I'd, I'd love to, to tour in UK or, or wherever. I, I want as many people to see the show as, as, uh, as possible. Yeah. And I, again, the first thing that me and sort of Dean said as soon as we came out was that that needs to go to as many different places as possible because so many people would love to see it, particularly this year as it's the 45th sort of anniversary of the movie too. You know, people are really just, it's, it's, it seems to be on people's minds, particularly the cinephiles among us, you know, Jaws is such an important movie. It's the 45th anniversary. This is a, a perfect time to sort of do that. And I think your show is just a fantastic conduit to, to do that. Um, in terms of being a cinephile, obviously Jaws has sequels. Uh, so you've got Jaws 2, Jaws 3D and Jaws The Revenge. Could you rank them for me in terms of what you think is the best to the worst? This is a confession for you. I, I haven't seen them all. You haven't? Um, oh, right. Okay. I haven't. No. Which, one, which ones have you seen? Well, I'm afraid I st years and years ago, I started watching Jaws 2 and I thought, well, this isn't Jaws. I was frustrated. So that um, got switched off, I'm afraid. And, I, and okay. reviews on the others weren't... Uh, exactly glowing. So, which would you recommend? <laughs> I should get round to it. <coughs> I would love to see you watch Jaws the Revenge because if you think that Jaws 2 isn't Jaws, Jaws the Revenge is so far away from what Jaws is. Uh, I, I, I know people that live on the moon that are closer to Jaws than, than this particular movie. So um, I, if, that, if there's an invite there, I'd love to sit there and watch Jaws the Revenge with you because I, would, I think you'd have a breakdown. <laughs> um, if you could play, watch the other pictures because um, it's a mind. Uh, I don't wish to, you know, um, cast any aspersions on. Them. I just uh, was watching other movies, and and uh, it never seemed to me uh, to be, uh, you know, um, especially important to watch the other ones, but. Um, now I'm doing this, I should get around to it. Although, as I say, that you know, the, the play isn't about Jaws. It's only, you know, a slice. It's a slice of Jaws, as it were. Mm. There was one question that came up um, regarding your dad's birthplace, and you probably are aware of this. But um, John Trainer, he wanted to ask if you have ever been able to visit the Robert Shaw pub in West Horton, Lancashire. And have you drank um, from, I think it's the, I think there's actually a Robert Shaw brew. I think they've actually got a beer named at the pub too as well. Uh, I have not been there, and, uh, but I am aware of the pub. And on our trip, when Duncan Henderson, myself and Liam mm -hmm. Mary Scott were um, going up to Edinburgh, you know, from the south coast, we, 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 we could have stopped there. And we thought of what would happen if we went in there in costume, the three of us, uh, Shaw, Charlie, and Dreyfus. That would be brilliant. Um, but uh, unfortunately, you know, it's a long trip and we had all this set with us and we, we, yeah. we didn't have to. But, uh, another time. Another time. That would be fantastic. That would just be final, last, last night on the final show, straight down to that pub, drinking the Robert Shaw. Done. Fantastic. <laughs> um, in terms of uh, sharks themselves, now obviously uh, there's a, sort of a bone of contention here around sort of the reputation that Jaws gave sharks, but what's your personal opinion of sharks and have you ever gone swimming with um, sharks or great whites or, or anything like that? And that is from uh, Reese in Australia, who is inviting you to Australia, by the way, if you want to do it. Well, I love Australia. I've been, I've been diving in Australia. Um, uh, 
and at the Great Barrier Reef. And, and in fact, I saw a very small shark and I was absolutely terrified. Um, <laughs> as, uh, you know, a lot of people were, um, I was, you know, I saw the film, you know, when I was seven or eight. Hmm. Um, and I was traumatized um, by that experience to some extent. Um, hmm. You know, I couldn't go in a swimming pool. Um, you know, and I and I had dreams of sharks swimming around my bed. So, um, and I think I still, you know, have that. Even swimming in the English Channel is is, uh, you know, I'm sort of peering about just in case. Um, <laughs> so, no, I'm good. Um, Jaws has 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 done that for me, and um, you know. That's the price of entertainment. Yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess so. What a piece of entertainment it is. Um, I mean, I love animals, so I, 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 I obviously think it's important to protect these uh, hmm. vicious animals. Yeah. So, in one of the questions that came out, this is from um, Terry. Uh, Terry Bay. She says, as a, a fan of your dad and his novels, she's interested in the diaries. Will they ever be published, or some of the entries released? And also, are there any unpublished um, novels or notes written that you know of that may be getting released or available? Um, to the diaries, I would I would say no. I would imagine. I mean, that's a family um, issue, and I think that um, they would probably be, be kept private. But um, as for <coughs> he was. Before he died, he was writing a book, a novel about the Spanish Civil War, um, which I don't know what happened to that. Somebody in, in my family may or may not have, um, you know, the, the passages for that. He was certainly preparing to write one, and I don't know if that would be published. Mm. But um, I'd be interested to, to see that, actually. I think, I think many of us would, to be fair, because the thing about the, your dad is, and particularly as my um, Jaws journey has sort of gone on, I've started to really understand and respect your dad as a writer almost more than being an actor, even though he's a fantastic actor. When you read stuff, the stuff that he's written, it's, it's, just, it's just so good. The quality is just really, really there. And I, I wish that, you know, if people are watching this, if you can, find a Robert Shaw book somewhere, pick it up, read it because it's just, it's just fantastic. The, the quality is just amazing. You don't get books quite like that anymore, particularly the plays. I think it's Glass in the Man, Bo uh, Man in the Glass Booth, I think it is. Mm. Um, it, it, an incredible piece. You know, people should, should, un should understand and discover that part of, of your dad as well. Um, okay, so this is the moment, Ian. This is the question that is probably going to break the internet. So you're sitting down, you're ready. Um, in our first interview last year, you said that you met Steven Spielberg uh, at the Golden Globes briefly, and he said, you know, if everyone wants to do a prequel, can I use you? Ian Shaw, set the record straight. If the script was good, Spielberg was on board, the right people, right place, right time, and there was an opportunity to play Quint in maybe a spin-off or a prequel movie, would you do it? Well, I mean, that's un slightly unfair to, th to put Spielberg in there because, um, s first of all, if it wasn't Spielberg, I think it would be a, a pretty much a no because, um, and even with Stephen, I mean, God, I can't even believe that came out of my mouth. Um, it, it's 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 a wonderful it's a classic movie it's one of the classic films they didn't know how good it was at the time it mm. was it was a, so far ahead of its time in 1975 i think they, it was released mm. um it really wasn't even i think they were quite snobby about about it and it's it's only grown and grown in its reputation as as the you know time has gone by um it would be very foolish, I think, to of me to uh, to try to mess about with that. I think you know. Um, 
you know, and, and I think St Mr. Spielberg would, uh, you know, uh, has, a, you know, a, so much other stuff to do. So it's, what, what a body of work he has. Hmm. Um, why would he uh, want to risk, you know, um, tarnishing, uh, you know the the, the all the, the wonderful memories that everyone have of of this of, of the film. You know, hmm. if um, I'm going to push you a little more on that because it's a great answer, but there was another sub question to that. I'm really curious just to hear your thoughts on. Um, just me and you. Forget the thousands of people watching. Um, if you were to do a Jaws prequel, or if you were thinking about maybe a Jaws prequel or side story about Quint, what do you think that could look like from a story point of view? What story would you maybe like to to see? Uh, I've, I, 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 I have no idea. I mean, it, it, it would be... I wouldn't even... As a writer, I wouldn't... I just wouldn't go there. Um, it's It's too... I mean, I think sequels, even, you know, any sequel um, has to be uh, a difficult thing to do. Mm. Um, but they've already done a few. And look how well they, they went off. Oh, here I am, not having seen them all. But um, it would appear that, that it was, it's quite a hard trick to pull off. Mm. So um, I, I, would, I would be very careful. Um, it's quicksand. Wise, wise words. Well, Ian, thank you so much for giving us um, the time this evening. You you should be a politician. Those last two answers were absolutely beyond diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> um, just tell us um, before you go, tell us about the show. Tell us where people can see it, where people can buy tickets. So we open on May the 11th. Um, at the Ambassadors Theatre um, off Shaftesbury Avenue in London. And um, uh, we, uh, you know, you can just get tickets from Ambassadors. Um, and um, we're performing until the end of July. Uh, and then, you know, um, we're, we're hoping to, to be elsewhere. And I, and I hope um, somewhere near you guys. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Ian, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us this evening. It's been a real pleasure. And thank you for just answering those questions so honestly and candidly. It's been a, a real pleasure. Um, hopefully, we can do this again next time and we'll get to see you uh, treading the boards in London. Thanks. No worries. Thanks, Ian, Ross. Thanks very much. Take care. See you later.